underneath this heading, which is an unexpected quadrilateral property, um, what I'd like you to do, this is actually harder than it, it sounds, I want you to draw for me a quadrilateral that is not a special quadrilateral. So I don't want a parallelogram, I don't want a square, I don't want a kite, I want something that looks really random <laughs> and arbitrary, which is, you can see the one that I've drawn here, um, but I, I want you to draw something that looks a bit unusual. And the reason why I'm asking you to draw something unusual is because you probably have sitting in the back of your mind um, this knowledge that special quadrilaterals, like let's use a rhombus for example, right? Special quadrilaterals like a rhombus have special properties, right? Not only are all the sides equal in a rhombus, like that's what makes a rhombus a rhombus, but if you were to draw a rhombus, the diagonals are always perpendicular with each other. Did you know that, right? Um, you, you can't not draw a rhombus, um, or you can't draw a rhombus where it's, per which, where its diagonals are at different angles, you won't end up having a rhombus. Um, and every, every shape has its own different things, right? Like a parallelogram, the diagonals will always bisect each other, and on and on and on, right? So special properties, okay? Now, if you draw a random quadrilateral, you kind of would expect that it doesn't have any special properties, um, except for the fact that the angles add up to 360 degrees because you know there's a couple of triangles that you can fit in there. However, um, we're going to explore an unexpected quadrilateral property today and we're going to prove that it's true using vectors. And that's really what this idea is about in the syllabus. It is, can you prove things like we used to use, um, like prove that things are congruent, two triangles are congruent, right? So that's a geometry proof, a deductive geometry proof. Um, we're going to do two deductive geometry proofs today and they're both going to be using vector thinking, okay? Have you drawn a quadrilateral for me yet? Yeah. Amazing, okay. Um, now, what I'd like you to do is, and if you've got another color here, this will help, but you don't have to, it's just a bonus. I want you to mark in, and if you've got a, do you have a ruler there by any chance? Yeah. Excellent, okay. You can do this even more accurately than I can. Can you mark in the midpoint of each of the four sides, okay? So measure it out, make it nice and accurate. I'm gonna eyeball it here because I don't have a ruler that I can put over the top of my iPad that I'm drawing on. So I'm gonna go, this one's pretty easy to spot. That one's gonna be about there. I'm gonna say about here. And then that looks about right. Okay, fantastic. Now, those four midpoints, right, we can think of them as the four vertices of a new quadrilateral. And in fact, what I'd love you to do is to join up the four midpoints that you just created. So, um, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's, oh, I missed, there we go. Let's see if this will snap for me. Nope, it's not. I'm just gonna have to do it like that. Do one more there, or like so. Now, I wonder if, if you've drawn your new quadrilateral here in the middle, have you noticed anything unusual about yours and mine? What, what have you noticed about it? Uh, it's a parallelogram. It is indeed a parallelogram. And it doesn't just look like a parallelogram. Um, I really like, um, sometimes I get the chance to do this with a lot of different students at the same time. Like there's just you and me doing this at the moment, right? But no matter what quadrilateral you try, and you can even draw like really weirdo ones, right? Like say for example, most people don't think of this when they think of a quadrilateral, but it is. It's still four-sided, right? And um, you can really quickly eyeball where the midpoints are going to be, somewhere like there, there, uh, where's this one going to be? There, and then maybe here? Even without me joining them up, you can probably see, oh, there's a, there's a parallelogram hiding there, right? And you've got yours, you can draw as many as you like, um, and it's just kind of like, what is going on here? Okay, there's a bit of a mystery. So, how would you go about proving that if you draw any quadrilateral at all, you will always, when you join up the midpoints, or the sides, you'll always end up with a parallelogram. It's kind of wild, right? Do you have any thoughts? What would you do? Uh, I'd try and associate the midpoint to it. So like uh, the midpoint of a specific like um, vector mm -hmm. or all four vectors, no matter what they are, their midpoints. Uh, mm, I'd probably say that they're uh, at least like, because I can see that two of the sides are like, if you split it into two triangles, they're like um, midpoints become two parallel sides, and I'm ah. probably prove that the I don't know maybe. <laughs> Addition? Yeah, yeah, okay. Look, Sean, you're doing, you're doing so well, can I say. You're doing like a hundred times better than I did when I first encountered this problem because 
um, vector thinking, as you, you probably, like over the last few weeks, you've probably started to experience, it's a bit different to like quantum geometry thinking or other kinds of thinking. And you've got to be quite comfortable. It's like speaking a new language. You've already got the skeleton of the proof. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you to see what's going on here um, so that you can, you can prove. Uh, and it's one of the things that's delightful about this is one of the reasons why I've given this example is that it's very little uh, working. There's not much to write at all. In fact, I'm looking at my working here. There's like three lines. That's it. That's the whole proof. Um, there's a bit of drawing, but the, the drawing is the fun part. Usually what is tiresome and frustrating about geometry proofs is you're like writing for pages and pages and it's like, oh man, when am I done? And the reasoning is very long. So what I want to do with you is we're going to think of this in vector terms and uh, you will see how powerful vector uh, logic is in, in constructing this proof. It's very efficient. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to think about these four sides. One, two, three, four. The four sides of the original quadrilateral. Let's just, um, let's get this one out of, I'll just chuck them over here. Okay, we don't need it. I want you to think of the four sides of this original quadrilateral as four vectors. Okay. Now, remember, vectors are uh, direction and magnitude. Direction and magnitude. Now, with the magnitude, um, good morning, Mrs. Alice, by the way, nice of you to join us online. Uh, with magnitude, that's just the length of each side, right? So you can't change that. But with the vectors, for these sides, you can actually choose which direction you want to go, right? So for example, if you have a look at this, this top one up here that's quite long, right? You can imagine it as starting from the left and going to the right. That's one vector. Or the same side, you can think of it as going the other way, right? So it's, it's two different vectors that we can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose directions for the vectors that are very deliberate, which you might think, why am, I, why am I doing it that way? And you're going to see as we go through this why it is that this makes so much sense. Okay, so let's call the top vector A, right? And let's say, let's go from left to right just because, you know, that's a bit easier to read, okay? So you can see I've just put, it's quite small there, but I put that arrow there at that, um, top right corner, so that vector A starts over here. Um, if you want, you could give this coordinate a name. You can call that the origin if you like, but it doesn't matter. Start from um, O and then head over here. Let's call that vector A, okay? Now, going from that top right corner, if I put another vector here, let's call this one vector B. So this is uh, going here and progressing along. So you said vector addition before. So if I go A plus B, I end up on this, this end here, right? Opposite to, to O. Uh, now, you might think a natural way to do this, normally when we name things, we'd go like, oh, A, B, C, D, and you'd go like clockwise or anti-clockwise or whatever. I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna go back over to the origin here, and I'm gonna make this vector down the bottom. I'm also gonna go from left to right. So I'm gonna call this one, I've got A and B, let's call this bottom one C. And then lastly, to round things off, I'll have vector D and it's also sort of going from left to right as it were. So I went from O over here, that makes me C, and then up here, I'm gonna have this one as D. Okay, are you following so far? So far, so good. Okay, now think about this, right? Vectors are, I keep saying it because it's so foundational and so important. Vectors are direction and magnitude, okay? So when we say the midpoint of a side, yeah. what does that mean in terms of a vector? What are you thinking? It means it's the halfway point of the vector. Very good. So what a midpoint does is it breaks, let's think about say vector A, right? Um, what a midpoint does is it breaks up A into two equal vectors, right? So there's this one over here, and then there's this other one on the other side, right? Now, they both share the same direction as the original vector, but what's different? The magnitude. Very good. So the, the magnitudes have changed, and all we need to do is multiply by the appropriate scalar. Because it's the midpoint, what's the scalar I should multiply by? A uh half. -huh. Very good. So both of these vectors up the top are half A. You following? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, I, can kind of, I can kind of see what you're going to do. Yeah, 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 very good. Okay, so the logic's starting to, to sort of form in your mind, right? So um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make these orange because I realized I am, um, I'm starting to confuse some of the things here. So make that one orange and make this one orange as well. Okay, so you can see if we look up the top here, right? See how I've got half A going in this direction? Can you see I have another vector beside it over here? Yeah. yeah, you see, this is the addition you were talking about before, right? So this vector in here, what's that? 
Half B. Yeah, very good. So this one here, half B. Okay. Now, what this tells me is, if you just look up in this little, this triangle up the top here, right? The, the side of this parallelogram that you made is the same as going half A and then half B if you added those vectors together, right? So therefore, I can just call that top side of the parallelogram half A plus half B. Does this make sense? Yeah. Now, what's brilliant is I can use this same logic on the other side of my quadrilateral, right? You're, you're spotting it. So I want you to tell me where where should I be looking? What what vectors should I be highlighting? Um, you should be highlighting the uh, second half of C. Very good. And the first half of D. Fantastic. So the second half of C is down here, just like I had the second half of. Um, a, and then the first half of D, that's actually a very clever way to say it by the way, because there's a beginning and there's an end obviously, that's, oops, not a highlighter, that's half D right there. So therefore, what I've got now is the half C plus half D vector, which is the other side of what I know, or what I can see, is a parallelogram. So. You've done all of the drawing. This is the fun part. I love this. There's so much um, logic that's just going to happen in a very con condensed place, right? I can say, hold on a second, starting from the origin, when you do A plus B, where do you end up? Over at this, this spot here, right? Um, I guess I could call that P for point, right? So A plus B gets you to P, but that's not the only way to this point, right? What's the other vectors I can add? C plus D. C plus D also get you from the origin to P. So I can say, hey, but A plus B and C plus D, they get you to the same spot. So they are equal vectors. So therefore, it's just mind blowing how much logic is happening here. When you just treat this with like arithmetic, I can just multiply both sides by half. And this gives me, sorry, I need a bracket there. This gives me the half C plus half D and the half A plus half B that you can see up above. And because they're vectors, right, what this tells you is, number one, sorry I keep saying it, but direction, the directions are equal, which means in like deductive geometry language, the directions being equal means they are parallel, right? But that's not the only thing. What's the other thing that's equal between these two vectors, not just direction? The magnitude. The magnitude. So therefore, they're not only parallel, they are equal in length. So I can say, um, therefore, uh, what do we say? Number one? Uh, oh, sorry. I, I should put some names on this, right? Um, so let's call this, I don't know, um, what letters haven't I used yet? I've got O and I've got P. Let's call this capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D. That, so that corresponds to the, all the little letters, right? So therefore, A, B is parallel to CD because the directions are equal and um, I guess we would say you know the magnitude of C, A, B and C, D is also equal and that's it that's that's all there is to it um, A, B in this case I've got the letter of the order of letters is DC um, is a parallelogram because opposite sides are both parallel and equal Full stop. I just love it. It's like one of the shortest geometry proofs in the world, but it's this very unexpected result. Um, and vectors are really doing all the work. Does that make sense?